Hey guys, Hardware Hound here, and welcome to part three of why graphics cards in 2019 are terrible. And yeah, this is the last part. And so I already talked about ray tracing, talked about exactly why we should wait till next year to get a new card. But if you're like me and something happens that you need an upgrade, what you gonna do? Now guys, if you've followed my channel for a long time, you've probably known that I've been on AMD cards for forever. In fact, I still have my RX 580 in my test bench, but you might notice that this is an NVIDIA card. <laughs> and yes, I totally went to Team Green because as much as I may be an AMD fanboy in some ways, I'm always looking for what's the best performance for value that I can use. But let's talk about how I got here first. So I've been running two R9-290Xs in Crossfire forever. I love Crossfire. It's a pain in the butt sometimes. Things don't work out. I still have plans for that Crossfire setup. Like I'm going to be doing other videos. I'm going to be looking at some problems that I had and offering some solutions that I want to share on YouTube. And I've got some new case designs I want to play with. So those cards, I still love them. But Borderlands 3 released and... This game was designed for AMD, and you know what it doesn't support? Crossfire. No Crossfire. A game completely designed for the ground up for not only just Radeon, but even Ryzen. I mean, it's on their intro, you know, logo, like, promotion page. You know, you first turn on the game, and these screens show up that show Ryzen and Radeon. Doesn't support Crossfire, and I was like... You know, I already kind of agree. I, I, I mean, when Jay's Two Cents came out and said Crossfire's dead, that was it for me. That was when I knew I needed to figure something out. But seeing that just confirmed it hard. Like, we're multi-GPU is going to be dead. And it's sad because I love it. It's my favorite thing too. But hey, we're where we're at. So I'm looking at Borderlands 3, and if I just want some decent settings, I'm getting like 30, 40 frames per second. And I'm like, crap, I can't, I can't play that. So I started looking into an option. And so the problem is, is I was thinking of getting something around, oh, you know, about the $250 range. And, you know, for that, it's just like an RX 580, and that's not really going to improve my performance any because... RX 580 is only slightly better than an R9 290X, and without Crossfire, you're not going to get much. So I was looking at numbers and thinking, to get a sizable boost, I would need to be around the 1660 to 1660 Ti level of performance. And that was kind of hard to find, and those proc cards are closer, you know, around $300 and up. And so I was just like, ah, what am I going to do? So I said, well, maybe I could look at something used. Sure enough, right in smack dab between the 1660 and 6060 Ti was the GTX 980 Ti. This guy is old school, but it still has really great performance. And I was like, hmm, wonder how much I could get one of those on eBay. Guys, I was able to buy this 980 Ti, the Gigabyte with the Windforce um, G1 Gaming, one of the, you know, pretty well accepted ones back then as far as cooling and performance concerned, for under 200 bucks even after shipping. And that is a deal. To basically get GTX 1660, 1660 Ti levels of performance, but pay about a hundred dollars less for it and this card has been working great now here's the thing guys when you're doing ebay buying though you've got to do your homework look at your sellers make sure they're like particularly if you're buying in the u.s make sure your seller's u.s based because sometimes you can get weird variants and things that don't don't cross over it's a lot easier to get refunds if something doesn't work out ebay is very cust you know buyer friendly and they will pretty much refund for i know i've sold things on ebay and i've pretty much had to refund things that I thought, ugh, this is not good, but I, you can't really argue it. And as long as you're timely and you're efficient and you make sure you don't wait too long, you can pretty easily, if somebody sends you a car that doesn't work, get your money back. 
don't go off eBay. Don't do any deals out. Somebody's saying, well, I'll sell this to you, but, but you're, you know, I'd like to, you know, can we do this price? No, don't do that. You go through eBay, you'll have your, your buyer protections there. But guys, this card's been fantastic. Like, I found a guy who had good customer reviews. I gave him an offer. He accepted a counter offer after a bit. And, or I think as more, I accepted the counter offer. But this has been a performer. So, when it came to my Crossfire setup, like Rise of the Tomb Raider supports Crossfire. And when I jump from that to this card, I may lose about five, ten percent. You can see, you know, I, I've did, I did some screen captures just to kind of show you a rough playthrough. You can see that, you know, overall my frame rate was a little bit higher with my crossfire setup than this. So, you know, maybe a little hit, but not enough to really matter. However, new games that I'm playing now that just don't support crossfire and are guaranteed almost never going to. I was playing. I I love Spyro, guys. <laughs> And when Spyro Remastered came out on PlayStation 4, I got it immediately. Then I found out it was coming out on PC. I was like, well, I'm going to own it on PC too. And then Humble Bundle had a deal, and I was like, yes! So I got Spyro. It doesn't support Crossfire. And you can see with an NVIDIA card, I'm getting close to like double performance on that, which is awesome. But like I said, Borderlands 3, that surprised me. It didn't support Crossfire at all. And as you can see there too, I'm getting almost double frame rates with the 98, GTX 980 Ti than I was on the single R9 290X, which is sad because I'd probably be doing really good if it supported Crossfire, but Crossfire and dual GPU setups are pretty much a dying breed. So we've just got to accept it and take our losses. So guys, this is something I recommend. Now there's one caveat. I didn't find out till later, and I wish NVIDIA would fix this, but this card does not support free sync monitors at all. Um, it looks like you have to have at least a 10, 000, you know, a 10K or 1K series card up. So if you're looking to spend a little more money, because I know those seem to go a little higher on the bids, but with about the same performance, if you can get a used 1070, you can support something like a FreeSync monitor. I've got my ViewSonic one, and it's got 144 hertz refresh rate, which is awesome, and it's still only 1080p, but for a budget gaming monitor, it's one of the best you can get at a low price. So, thing is though, if you can run your game at 144 frames per second or higher, you're still doing fine. You can enable things like Enhance Sync that will help with tears. And honestly, NVIDIA cards don't really tear, like, ever. Like, I'm surprised. I was playing some games that would blow through that frame rate and still wasn't seeing tears, which surprised me. So NVIDIA's got some great products on their hands. I would recommend an AMD card, but they were just all too expensive. Couldn't find one in that price range, but because I do like the fact that they've got more features in their drivers, but NVIDIA wins this one. They got the cost to performance on a used basis. GTX 980 Ti, pick up one of those, you'll get some crazy good performance, and that can tide you over for a year until the really good stuff comes out. Don't forget to check out my other videos, guys. I explain like, some things about ray tracing in detail, I explain why the cards that have been released this year really aren't worth the money, why you should wait till next year, and so those are linked in the description below. Let me know what you think of this video, though, and what you think of my ideas of looking for use in a GTX 980 Ti, and I will catch you later.